Hey guys, it's Dawn here and the Sarah somewhere. Um, today I want to, I've been getting a lot of messages asking for help with Buddy Sour horses. Uh, buddy Sour, herd bound type behavior where <clears throat> if um, the horse's mates are taken away, then they act insane running around pacing, um, completely anxious, can't eat, can't do anything, screaming, screaming, screaming until their mates come back. Uh, and this is, this is a toughie. <laughs> uh, people are asking me for advice on this one. And the reason why this is a toughie is because this has now become a whole self, um, self image, self-realization psychological issue you basically have a horse <clears throat> that is not balanced in the head <laughs> um you, you basically have a horse that is you know okay well what do we want ourselves as a person as an individual okay any individual should be a well-rounded um, well-balanced person you know they can hang out in a crowd they can hang out comfortably alone uh, for long periods of time they can you know go in and out of all situations in a sane manner they won't go insane if um, if their girlfriend or boyfriend leaves them to go to work and stuff like that but I don't know <clears throat> um, if everyone has done this but it's kind of common and you hear of people that have become so glued together and if you think about it it's not the same as true soulmates because two true soulmates they can be together they want to be together right but if one has to leave for an extended period of time the other one doesn't fall apart it's like one and one equals two it's not one and one equals one whole one you know it's it's not you complete me no you should be complete in yourself and then your 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 mate is um makes you stronger makes you even better because it's two whole beings becoming an even greater mega being <laughs> sort of thing it's not two broken pieces becoming one whole okay so um and then you know though the saying about you know you can't love someone else and, until you love yourself and and all that stuff um it's it's all because you need to be your own self first and so is this the the horse so this buddy sour horse is gonna is gonna lose his mind um, when they're gone and that's kind of like that's kind of like the psycho girlfriend that starts texting you the minute you get out of their sight do you miss me do you miss me do you oh I miss you I'm I, I can't stop thinking about you I miss you um, uh, you know I, I I don't know what to do with myself I, I, I can't live I can't live without you and they're not joking they really feel like you are their everything and they cannot be without you. Or if you've been in that situation and you know that yearning for someone else and and why is that? Okay, so why that is is because um, that person doesn't have the self-confidence and the self-love to be comfortable in their own skin. There's a void. There's some kind of void inside of them. And the quickest and easiest Thing to do is to fill it up with something else and we see this all the time okay in all these psychological issues you fill it up with food or you fill it up with exercise and goals or you fill it up with the belief that you can fill up the void with material objects so you go shopping when you feel bad you eat when you feel bad um, uh, you attach yourself to someone else to make you feel better you you attach yourself you typically attach yourself to someone because of how they make you feel inside um, they you have associated endorphins that you get that they give you in their presence you know and, and then you would 
attach that to them and they go give me more give me more it becomes a drug becomes an addiction um but it, that's not that's not necessarily healthy and the the horses uh do this to dogs dogs do it too you'll see you'll see dogs with separation anxiety um dogs that go insane if you leave them because they're you know so what is that void the void is avoid it's something missing it's something missing in their life um or it could be fear it could be loneliness it could be because um you know their life is just so miserable and so they're filling it with anything else and they they become grabby ah oh, give me give me give me give me food to stuff my face let me let me buy things let, let me you know do this do this or you know chasing after adrenaline or um anything to fill this void okay so that's dogs we see it in dogs we see it in horses um in the herd bound the the the, the not herd bound the buddy sour the buddy sour horses and stuff like that so how do you how do you fix that well it's complicated because it is all encompassing and it could be many different things that is that is tying into this okay so what i do i always work on the whole horse um, no matter if I'm training them, no matter if I'm visiting them, no matter if I'm trimming their hooves, um, which shouldn't have anything to do with anything else, but no, hooves connected to the whole horse, whole horse issue, okay? So I can't do anything half-assed. I can't, you see how I get completely, if I get an interest in something, I go into it 100%. I can't just, you know, keep a blind eye to everything. I explore all options um, because that's the quickest way to diagnose things is to start from one and work your way up. So if we start at one, make sure your horse is getting fed um, <clears throat> or has access to hay 24 seven. This really isn't, it's, it's really not an option. This is how they are made. They don't have gallbladders and they eat grass, which has very little nutritional value in comparison to the size of the beast and the amount of energy that they can expend. Um, the whole way that that even works is because they're eating it all the time. They're eating this, you know, puny grass, but they're eating it all the time, so it's okay. Now, humans and dogs and cats, we're all hunter-predator types, and so we are different, and we have to recognize that we are different. We eat big meals and then go for periods of starvation before another big meal. Our bodies are designed to do that. We, food is, our food is harder to come by you don't get a big kill a big hunt three times a day every day in the wild you get a big hunt every once in a few days you eat off of that and you you know gorge or if you find berries um <clears throat> you you know berries are only going to last for so long and then they're out of season and you run out you gotta you gotta find more so our food comes in spurts and our bodies are designed to to deal with that fine not theirs okay they are they can do uh they can eat trees barks bushes grasses all of these have comparatively low nutritional value especially compared to their size and their energy expenditure but it works because they are on it all the time and their system needs that without it they get ulcers and then you can't even see it and even if it's not even if it doesn't become an ulcer it is still is uncomfortable it affects their mind because um, you might think well, my horse is obviously not starving. They got, you know, a great body condition score and, you know, you can't see their ribs and they're obviously fine. No, not necessarily because if you think that you're starving, 
it still affects you psychologically. So if they think that they are starving for so many hours every day, it has affected, it is going to affect their mind. Now, of course, everyone's an individual. For some horses, it may be more important than for other horses. Some horses are very food driven, some horses aren't. But still, I mean, it still doesn't change the basic fact that they are grazers, meant to be grazing for the majority of every 24 hours. Um, but, you know, different horses, are, uh, different individuals are going to place different priorities on things, okay? So, the hay 24-7 thing is not too much to ask. Um, they need it. It's what they're designed for. Uh, there are horses that develop serious issues. We see it in cribbing, we see it in pacing and all that, just from that alone, okay? Just from the food issue alone, they can develop psychological issues. So we need to address that. Um, the other thing is you'll see horses that start pinning their ears back at feed time. And then you're going, well, why would they do that? I'm coming up about to feed them. They should be grateful. They should be loving me right now. And the, the only example I can think of is the other night I, I um, heard the TV on and there was a hostage, hostage situation where there was a gunman and he had taken a bunch of hostages and he was he was working with the police and he decided to let some of the hostages go so the gunman had said okay you know you guys can go ahead and leave and this one lady she said everybody that left turned to the gunman and said thank you before they walked out the door but she couldn't because she was filled with rage and so she couldn't even she made sure to not look at the gunman when she left because she said if i had looked at him i would have just let him have this rage and i know that that would have been bad for me and everybody else so i made it a point to not look at him but i i was just filled with rage so you see how the two different personality types responded to that situation a whole bunch of people were like thank you for letting me go and then this other gal was all like f you you know da 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 right um and that's kind of like with the horse and withholding feed from them you don't see it as you withholding feed but they do if they're starving and they're hurting and their tummy hurts and all that and usually there's a whole bunch of other stuff along with it but um, so some horses respond in anger to it. And so that's why they pin their ears at feed time and they act, they get food aggressive and that will, that will build because time will make that worse and worse and worse. Think of a, um, a disgruntled employee sort of situation. You have, you know, have you ever been a disgruntled employee? You feel like your employer doesn't listen to you, doesn't appreciate you, doesn't give you what you need to do your job. Okay, that's kind of how they're feeling. And that just builds, that resentment builds and builds and builds. So a person comes and says, you know, um, yeah, I want you to train my horse. I want you to teach him X. And I'll look at the horse and I'll go, well, I'm going to need you to do this before I can even address teaching him how to pick you up at the mounting block and they're gonna go why would me feeding my horse have anything to do with my horse picking me up at the mounting block and then I'll go because my training method is to teach the horse that they have a choice and your horse right now hates you so your horse doesn't want to pick you up at the mounting block which is why your horse is spinning away from you every time you try to mount it your horse hates you so you know, I can't make your horse love you and want to pick you up. Well, I can, but that goes against everything. That's me forcing, and that goes against my whole training philosophy. So I won't. You know, there are plenty of other people that can do that, so you'll have to find one of them. Um, for me, and the power of what I do is... I go stand on my mounting block and I whistle wherever Lasser is, he will come running 
and he will sidle up to that mounting block and and you know let me get on him he'll make sure I'm secure and then we go when I say it's okay to go that is not force that's training it's discipline but that's not force but the power of that is because he wants to do it and that is the whole magic of what I do I'm doing it so anyways um, okay so food very very important then um, are they getting enough sleep do they have clean bedding do they have any muscle issues um, back hawk um, lower back issues uh, stifle issues do their feet hurt are their hooves healthy if your feet hurt can you concentrate at school um, oh uh, if you have kids and you send them to school you remember that whole big thing about you know it all going to the top levels where they said hey you gotta feed your kids you, if you don't feed your kids we can't teach your kids your kids can't concentrate because they're hungry or your kids can't concentrate because of this well that's the same thing that I'm saying with the horse okay they can't concentrate if they're not getting enough sleep they can't concentrate if they're in physical pain if they have ulcers if they're not getting enough food and all they can think about is food and all this stuff and each of those things can lead to psychological issues so I know we're supposed to be talking about buddy sourness but all of this okay so these are all of that that is a foundation that should already be solid before we can even address anything else so now body issue I would suggest that you watch my videos about self-confidence because those those are some things that you can teach them how do you develop self-confidence you develop it by time and experience by going out and doing stuff set up obstacle courses go out on long trail rides 10 miles minimum and I say 10 miles minimum because you go out for an hour two miles do you guys really get anything out of it you got to get the blood pumping and stuff um, going out and and letting them run I know that a lot of people don't do that but can you think back when you were a kid did you ever feel the joy in just running and just running as fast as you can across a field there was a joy there they call it runner's high there is a joy in that and that's what horses are kind of made and designed to do they're made to run um, so if you can fill that void fill it with proper food fill it with exercise proper exercise not just lunging them around in a circle nobody likes that nobody nobody likes that um, you know arena work is okay but it's you know boring pure joy of running comes when you're out <laughs> um, and okay so those are all things that you can fill the void got to give the horse a sense of purpose um, you can do that by teaching them a job you know how they say dogs need to have a job there are certain dogs like Jack Russell Terriers um, and uh, well, a lot of the terriers <laughs> where they are just so hyper and stuff and they are destructive and the thing is they're not destructive if you give them a job these dogs need a job they need a purpose and people are like that too a lot of moms when they stop working to stay at home and be a stay-at-home mom or something a lot of women go kind of insane because they feel like they lost their purpose if they found their identity in their job then they could feel that they lost their purpose or um, I, I don't know people need to have a sense of purpose so do dogs so do horses okay they need to have that sense of purpose. Give it to them with a job, routine, discipline, uh, filling up the other voids, uh, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> when you do obstacle course stuff, that is great stuff because it allows them to overcome a fear overcome an uncertainty and when they come to the other side and you praise them and you give them carrots or whatever or pats whatever your reward system is then they get us they get that sense of joy and and uh, accomplishment and pride and all that you think horses don't feel pride 
Oh yeah, they feel pride in what they do. Um, I don't know if they feel love, uh, but yeah, they get, they have pride, you know, look at how proud a lot of these stallions look and stuff like that. But um, yeah, they need that. They need the validation. How important is validation? Very important. It's very important for us to get validated and for us to get built up. You build up your horse and then they get the self-confidence. Things that tear down the horse is when you ignore their needs, when you make them suffer through something that you know that they don't like because they're just a horse. They should just suck it up and take it. That's life. Um, think about the disgruntled employee situation, okay? When you treat your employees like that, they get disgruntled. They get resentment. So is that horse. You're, this is a sentient being and you're treating it like that and then they're not going, and then, and then these people always wonder, why doesn't my horse come when I call? Um, you know? <laughs> I knew horses that hated their owner, this one lady. Oh my gosh, every time she walked past their stalls, all the horses, she had like five horses, they'd all pin their ears <clears throat> and she turned her back to them and they would charge at her. And she said, I don't care, just as long as they do their jobs. They're here to do a job and that's it. And she made sure that they did their jobs and they did their jobs, but every moment I saw them plotting her death. And um, yeah, she got injured on them all the time. They'd fall on her. They, she's broken legs and broken arms and shoulders from them s smashing into her. All of these were supposed accidents, but I do dangerous, controversial things and I've never had that. I've never had horses out to get me. And these horses were out to get her, but she just didn't care. Um, so it can get to that level. It can get as bad as that. I've trained horses where um, they would nicker at me when I would arrive at the ranch. And the owners are like, what? My horse don't even, doesn't even nicker at me when I come up to the, you know, when, when I arrive at the ranch. And I'm like, horses need to be heard. There is a communication that I do with horses and it's invisible and it's silent and I'll try to get some of those on film. In fact, a lot of my videos in the background, that is what I'm doing. And that's why I have Lasser in the video too. Um, just so that you guys can see that invisible bond or the invisible communication that's going on. Um, learn to do that. Timing is everything if you're gonna train. Timing is a difference between a good trainer and a bad trainer. Okay, and then the, all the invisible cues that you can pick up on, all the feels you can pick up on. Um, what else? Oh, um, okay, so there was a horse that was Buddy Sour, and it turned out that it was, it was the bit. <clears throat> um, don't worry, I'm not, you know, this horse never went bitless. I said that that I offered that suggestion to the owner, but the owner didn't want to go bitless. So <clears throat> instead of going bitless, I at least changed a bit to a bit that the horse was not offended by. And then the horse was like, oh. And then um, we did other things. And by the end of that, the horse wasn't buddy sour anymore. In fact, um, <clears throat> of the conclusion of my training to show the owner what I've done is I called her up and said, hey, we're, we're coming by the, the, your house right now, so look out the window and watch us. And I collected her up and we went right by the house and her other horse that was Buddy Sour, those two are Buddy Sour, they would scream at each other. Well, that one was screaming at the horse I was riding, 
my horse never even flicked the ear, was completely so engrossed in what I was asking of her and so focused and she had such good work ethic that she just focused on me, never even flicked the ear, never answered the, her buddy horse, nothing. And then we came back, um, it completely fixed her jigging back home to be with her buddy how they would call out to each other as they're being separated. They'd scream back and forth. And then coming home, she'd jig home and then they'd be screaming at each other. All of that fixed. And it was by having, by changing her bit helped because she hated, she just hated that other bit. So we could, did, couldn't go bitless, but we can change to a bit that was less offensive. Um, and then of course, you know, how the, how the owner uses her hands. Um, and then basically took away what was pissing the horse off and making the horse turn away from the owner and seek comfort in another horse. Oh, this is at the end of this video. So I bet a lot of people already stopped watching, but here's something really important. One thing that is so magical about humans and our interspecies relationships is that we can do that. We can actively do that. Humans can go out and become best friends with just about every creature on this earth. That's like our superpower. And we need to, well, we don't need to, but you know, we can tap into that. That is a gift that we have. We need to tap into that. But instead of tapping into it like, I am the ruler of the whole world and I can use it, abuse it, and trash it and pollute it and kill it as, as much as I please, that, that's not our role on this earth. Our role is we have this superpower so that we can protect and help everybody else. We are the, we are the wardens or the sheep herders. I don't know. Now I'm starting to sound kind of sappy, but you know what I mean? We are the protectors of this world. So that is the mindset that we have to have. And when we have that mindset, the horse will bond closer to us than to the other horse. That is what you have to remember. A lot of people will say, Animals are animals. They will always stick to their own kind. No, look at how many examples we have where animals choose humans over the other animals. Practically speaking, because we can provide better. We're more intelligent. We can provide more and all that. So then they recognize that and then they come to us. They turn to us, but then use that. If you are not providing for your horse the way that you could and should, then they're gonna turn somewhere else and look for comfort somewhere else. They're not gonna to turn to you. Look at all the dogs. Dogs are pack animals, right? So dogs should always choose a fellow dog over a human, but no, we know that's not the case. You have, you have, I don't know, 30 dogs in a pack that live together, sleep together all the time. The human steps into the picture. Who do each and every one of the dogs turn to and look to? And the dog will choose that human over any of their other dog buddies any day. You know what I'm saying? So can the horse and the horse does it. The horse will protect the human against cows. You see the cowboy horses do this. Um, they will protect their human against other horses. So if you think that the horse is just a horse, of, their, of course they're going to you know, pick other horses before human, that's not necessarily true. Uh, and it's not necessarily because of love and sappy stuff like that, but practically speaking, survival. Everyone has a survival and the human can provide more security, food, shelter, endorphins, um, a purpose. The human can provide all that, whereas another horse cannot. But if you are not providing it, 
well then of course the horse is going to look elsewhere so the whole point of all of you know my my whole training thing is how to turn this horse around to where they see me as their provider and their everything and they choose me over and over again um lesser has been let loose with hundreds not hundreds but tons of horses and he'll go play with them for a while but then he always comes back to me and if i whistle he'll come back to me um because that's that's the place that he's chosen and it also helps personality wise because he was never a really horse horse he was more of a people horse actually no he wasn't because he used to hate people he used to just be an individual he was by himself um he was a loner horse but um but he has accepted me as his partner right sir come here so there you go um i know that oh Whoa, you can't take up the whole screen. Come on. So I know that this video was really long, but there are so many, it's complicated. It's really complicated because it's, it's you're trying to delve into a horse's mind and a horse that is buddy sour like that is um, gonna be kind of broken. Oh, you can't see your head. All right, so there you go. Hope that helps. And um, any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Bye guys.